joints on the left, living the hills, but I still get a spread. Sorry for the live, but I still reinvest it. Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing. I just want the lesson, I just want protection. I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression. Mama never plans if he waits for perfection. I think it's to the uh, down. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in at September 14, 2021, and the stock market is going to move big tomorrow. And I got three stocks that I'm looking at coming into the rest of the week, but tomorrow we're getting the CPI report, and this is what we got up here. If you've been watching any of these watch lists, this is the market impact monitor, and this is showing you the average response after these reports, and then I got a couple of key data points to highlight here, but it's looking like maybe a one in four chance that we get above a 1% move. So I have a couple of things I'm going to go over. We have a nice chart explaining some of the moves that we've seen in the market. We haven't seen a 1% move in a while, so that's why tomorrow could be very, very key. I do have expectations, but given the last month or so, and then as we approach the middle of the month here with some of that option volatility, it is looking like tomorrow and the rest of the week are going to be exciting. So we got a lot to talk about. I want to go over everything that happened in the market today. There was a lot, but not too much. A lot of random stuff, even some fake news out of Walmart and Litecoin, but we did get to see a weird gap up and then sell off. Surprisingly, the S&P managed to close green, and now the NASDAQ is the only one at a six-day losing streak, but overall from the markets, we have broken that five-day losing streak that we came into here, and we avoided being one of the worst weekly sell-offs since February of 2020. So, very surprising. A lot going on. We're going to go over all of that. The plays that we made today, I actually made a couple. The plays that I'm looking at for tomorrow, I actually have a couple that I'm eyeing, and then everything else for the rest of the week. So, uh, let us not delay. You guys know what you need to do. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you subscribe. And if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes for open. It's the first link in the description, and it's been in the comments. We better see you there in the morning. It's free 99. It costs you nothing to join. YouTube.com slash the stock market. You can post a play, see the plays, watch the watch us come to life, and yes. If gordita is a word that you could fit anywhere in your daily use of vocabulary, then yeah, we are the place to be. And the most important thing you need to do, post or watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to chat, baby. And uh, please do not forget, No Stop Loss by Uncle Answers is out on all platforms. You can even get it on YouTube for free. And shout out to the merch, baby. Most of it's sold out, but you got some available. But right off the bat, as far as what we're going to get tomorrow, the CPI is going to be the key. But if you really think about how this last month and a half has played out, we actually have a lot of hints as to what is going to be happening. However, I will kind of argue here. I'm kind of taking this to left field right off the bat, but I do think that there is actually more pressing issues in the market. We've been focusing a lot on taper talks and inflation, and you've seen how the market has responded. We have the market impact indicator, but overall, there's a lot of things going on right now, and one of those things is the debt ceiling. We got some updates on that, as well as the spending bills, the infrastructure. We're hearing about the tax plan and all that. We got some updates in the tax plan is a lot lower than a lot of us really thought at the beginning of the year. There's no 40% capital gains. I think they wanted at like 29, but still, those are what we're going to be getting a lot this week. So as far as the CPI tomorrow, it is going to be key. We'll go over the market impact analysis, but as far as what I'm expecting, I am expecting a higher print. The expectation is 5.3%. The last CPI came in at 5.4%, and these are historically some of the highest prints that we've gotten in the last like 20 years or so. So the expectation is still high. However, Wall Street is expecting the print to be lower than last month. Now, like I said, with some of those hints, given the closure of China, some of these more supply chain issues, what we even got out of the beige book, I think we might get some of that pressure. So I am expecting the print to go higher than 5.3, but I do not think it will go too much above the expectations. If it does, that will be a surprise and the market will react. And then on the opposite side, if there's anything substantially less than the 5.3 or it comes in a lot lower, that could actually be very bullish and I would not underestimate the market to take that and run with it and ignore everything else until reality sets in a couple days later or so. But now coming into the market impact analysis, this is what I want to highlight here because
because if you look at the last 12 CPI releases, this is showing you a six hour chart. So pretty much from the release all the way till the end of the day, usually we look at that first 30 minutes, but on average, you barely get a market move. I think it's like a slight decline of a 10th of a percent. If it is a good response, you'll get a move as far as 0.6%. And then on the downside, it's about as low as 0.75 right there. So this is what makes tomorrow interesting. I'm actually jump right back here to this chart, your first pretty picture here. If you take a look at the S&P 500 on top right here is showing the number of consecutive days without a 1% gain. So you're seeing here now we've had well over a month without it. It's starting to shoot up here. So now that we have such a big event after Jackson Hole, the jobs report and all of these growth slowdown expectations, I think tomorrow's print is going to be key. And then if we look at last meeting, you'll see right here, this one did produce a, a pretty decent above average response. Again, in the beginning, it looked a little bit crazy, but this one moved a quarter percent. And then when we come into May, this one was a 1.5% drop down. And this was just about two, three months ago, last time when we had a 1% move. And then if you go two months before that in March, 2021, we had a positive result just below 1%. So Europe did good yesterday. China did bad, depending on what happens and how some of those other countries do. This could create an interesting opportunity. So I am expecting a big move, but that will be dependent on the sort of number that we get tomorrow. So that is going to be the first main thing you're going to need to be watching there. And then as we get here to the next keys, it's pretty simple, but I got another pretty chart to show you before that. And this is showing the put and call ratio versus the S&P and individual stocks. So what a lot of people are noticing here is that option activity has actually gone up on individual stocks, but then the indexes, SPY, IWM, EEM, any of the ETFs or indexes, even on the futures, they are not getting as much activity here. So this is saying something about it. And you see how the market is positioning as we get into the middle of September. And depending on what happens here and after the middle of the month here, we should start to see a lot, but keep that in mind. But now with CPI on the table, there's really not too much to watch for. But what you will see right here, and we're getting this towards the end of the fiscal year, but a lot of money is being raised through stock offerings, bond sales, and all of that. So we got a lot of it today, but I would definitely be on the lookout for any deals, buyout deals, mergers, or anything of that nature. We are probably going to see a lot of that as companies approach their fiscal year. They're going to want to spend some of this money. So coming into the the company news and events. Now, this was the first thing that we dealt with in the morning, but there was fake news with Walmart. Uh, there was a fake press release. And again, they, they are back. And I say that because the last time I've really seen a fake press release trying to sway the public for somebody to make a trade, this time it's crypto. Back in the day, they would play stocks. But now this is something that's happened in the past where people issue fake press releases. They slip through the cracks, they hit the news wire, and they cause certain stocks or assets to move. Move. And well, that's what happened with Walmart. There was a fake press release saying that they partnered with Litecoin. And then the real issue, we got to hear from the chief uh, or the, whoever the leader is of Litecoin. And he said it was a terrible error because one of their employees retweeted the fake news of the partnership. So if you're watching this morning, the news came out everywhere because it was a fake press release that came through the newswire. So it took about 10, 20 minutes. Everybody's like, this doesn't seem real. And then we were able to confirm it was fake. But then at that point, point. Litecoin had already retweeted it. People were looking around. We even called into the corporate office of Walmart. We tried to get a hold of people, but eventually everybody in the market figured it out. So that was a very big deal. There was even updates by SEC Gensler on crypto, stable coins, and even corporate bond markets. So considering how the last week has played out here, I would definitely keep an eye on crypto and be careful on any news releases that come out from here because I would not be surprised if we see another one in the next quarter or even by the end of the year there's usually going to be a copycat of this. So watch out for that one. That's the first piece of news. The second one, this one came towards the end of the day, but this one's very interesting. Apple is rushing to block a spyware that could be activated on iPhones without even clicking on it. So there's this Israeli uh, non-governmental organization. They produce like weapons and stuff like that, but they created a spyware to spy on the Saudis. And essentially it's like a special PDF. And if it gets sent to your iPhone, they can actually have access 
business and see what you're doing on there, you don't even need to engage. So they said that they're working on it. I think they have it patched already. But if anything comes out for this, or if we hear kind of a delayed response, think kind of solar winds, this one will be important. So keep your eye out for that. Then coming into the deal space, like I'm saying, as we approach the end of this fiscal year, you had Intuit uh, announcing that they're acquiring MailChimp for $12 billion. AT&T said they're buying TMZ. Qualcomm offered today for VNE at $37 a share. They even verified that they got the offer in. And then Vonage went up on a strategic review uh, by, I think it was Janus Partners. One of their activist investors pressured them to do a strategic review to see if they could sell. So that was just a couple. I think there was two more throughout the day, but you saw a lot of this activity, a lot of pops. I would not be surprised to see this towards the end of the year. So keep your eye out for that. Then coming into the EV space, this one's interesting. You saw a lot of the EVs go up. Ford and GM, there was reports on this new tax credit, about 12500 for some of these electric vehicles. So that was good. But then Toyota, because they are non-union, they're going to be offering or getting less of the money. They could only offer 7500 but they object to the exorbitant tax breaks for the rich because they're saying that all these car makers that are getting the $12,000 incentives, most of these cars are in the fifty, sixty, dollars $100,000 price range. And if anything, it's going to hurt the cheaper models out of Toyota and Honda, which aren't unionized which is the result of them getting a smaller EV tax break. So keep your eye on that. But this space has been getting very interesting. It could be a bright spot in general. So watch out for that. Then uh, JP Morgan's Kalanovic. This guy has a very, very big history. A lot of people like him. He's a very, very wise dude. But now he has came out and said it's time to cut tech and that there is now a reopening revival. His essential theory was that Delta and everything going crazy in the last month or so slowed down and stopped the reopening trade. And that's why people rushed to the defensives in tech. He said it's time for that to end and that people are going to get right back to the reopening revival and that's looking good. And then he even advocated emerging market in Japan equities, which have lags. So I would definitely keep your eye on this because if we see that reopening trade or that rotation come to life, this could be very key and we'll need to see what happens. So watch out for that. And then finally, this has been a hot space, but Capital One says they are now testing a buy now and pay later option. So had a little bit of a pop. You saw even a firm in their earnings and all that. So this area has been hot for a lot of companies. And then Taco Bell announced that they are testing a 30-day taco subscription. So you pay monthly and you could get a certain amount of tacos. Yeah, that's the where we live in right now, man. I don't know what to tell you. But either way, tomorrow is going to be exciting. And depending on what this CPI does, we may get a lot of market action. So I hope you're ready. But that is pretty much it. So let us get into the plays. So right off the bat, I got three or four different stocks that I'm looking at coming into tomorrow. I did make a play on a couple of them. Some we've watched for a very long time. So I'm just going to be eyeing those. But the first one was Cisco. I went for this play on the Android analyst day we talked about it i believe on wednesday it's going to be their first time ever welcoming analysts to the company to actually talk ask questions and all of that but their first time in four years so the play is very speculative i'm saying that this is pretty much a speculation that some level of catalyst the upgrade downgrade a positive note even a negative note may come out of it but i am definitely going to be watching out for that i did make a play on it and then john nigerian from cnbc uh, after we made the play a couple hours later we saw during market he announced that he got in on that play too so i'm liking it there i did go up uh, pretty decently big for the most part and even off of the mornings the premiums were actually pretty insane i tried to get the same option at nine cents and this was just me trying to do my bidding thing on there and beforehand i couldn't even get filled i upped it to 11 they wouldn't get filled so i had to go in at 12 cents but i bought 20 of the october 15th 62 and a half calls at 12 cents a pop so about 240 dollars but the thing about cisco is that it's it's a pretty small mover. If you even look here, this is 52 to like $58 in the last three months. So even though 62 and a half looks kind of close on the option chain, this is a slow mover. So it's not really expected to do much. So keep that in mind and don't get too ahead of yourselves. I don't know how the premium closed. I think we we're up like 30% at one point. And yeah, I guess it actually held up there. So it closed around 33%. Going to be riding that play out though, but I really, really do like it. We will see what happens with that. But that's the first play. The second play is going to be Shopify. I went with the puts. I talked about this with and yesterday it sucked because I went for the Cisco's at first and at that point Shopify was already down 2% in the morning so I did have to pay a little bit of a premium but I still like the play it aligns with this whole tech risk off trades that Kalanovich has said so if we see that reopening trade develop I think Shopify 
could be one of those names that people sell off. And like we said, it has some meat on the bone, but the options are expensive. They have a premium right now, given the last few days, and the spreads are absolutely insane. So watch out for that. But I am looking to get more. So I did start off with two plays, uh, pretty decent. I spent around $700. I got the October 15th, 1080 puts, and I'm going to start there, but I want to see how things go by. Because one thing, I've been grabbing a lot of Octobers, but don't let the clock fool you. We are very, very close to ending September. So some of these might become weekly options faster than you think. So going to keep my eye on there, but I got to be vigilant with that one. But watch Shopify. Then finally, or actually I got two more after this, but Airbnb, I'm really, really liking this one. Again, they dropped today. They got a price target decrease, or I believe it was Goldman that initiated coverage and they gave them a 132 price target. It was not an optimistic report at all. So kind of added a little bit of the dampers given the last two months of it just rallying. So that definitely had an effect on it today, but I'm going to be watching out for uh, this private summit that they're hosting tomorrow. Uh, and I say private just because it's not open to like the press and all that. I'm sure we will get some updates, but they're holding this summit with a couple of the heads of the company, Investor Relations, and I want to say the vice president. We will see, but if anything comes out of that, I will be watching out for it. And if we do see a reopening revival, Airbnb is strongly positioned for that one. So I'm going to keep my eye on them. And then finally, Ford, another reopening revival. I'm, I'm going to beat this term to death. I like it though, because I want to see if it happens. But if anything, Ford was up a lot on those tax breaks. It has been just battered down in the last three months. So if it is able to get a boost here and then have that reopening trade, I think a lot of eyes are going to be on that one. So it could be a very, very good trade. So those are going to be the main plays as far as everything else. We already said Cisco. I want to watch Walmart. Uh, and this is something I'd keep my eye out on for the same time. Just look at Domino's, uh, even McDonald's and Home Depot. But a lot of the value trades, they were up. You I mean, I would have expected Walmart to be up today. I think the bad news clapped them a little bit so just watch where they fit into all of this that one was interesting then uber uh they got a price target increase in coverage by goldman sachs and it was very good they were up and then sold off at the end of the day but i would definitely keep my eye out for them they've been holding at this base so it could stay here for a while or at any moment it could pick up and it is going to pick a direction because anything below here has a lot of room to set another base or otherwise if it bounces from here may have been uber last chance we'll see but watch them watch into it again it had the news with the deal and all that, even Oracle too. They had their earnings and they had a little bit of a pop lock and drop. So I would keep your eye on them. I want to see how they play in tomorrow, but then watching some of those value plays, like I said, Domino's, McDonald's, HD. I'm really liking HD and McDonald's here. Again, this is based on the reopening revival. We have to see how it plays out. And that's why after the CPI tomorrow, we should get some clarity, but watch out for them. Watch out for Baba. I had these plays. Remember we made that play on Friday. They were up 50% in the morning. I didn't take the profits this time. I was like, okay, Okay, I'm going to ride it out here. I got some other plays, but it bounced up. The plays are only down like 8 9%. So even though they're weeklies, the premium is still up there. I am going to watch again. We got more bad news out of China today. They clapped Alipay and, or Ant and Alipay, and they wanted to separate them and a couple of other things. So watch them. Same thing even with JD. Some of them were able to close green. So just keep your eyes out for them and see where they go from there. But I'm really liking those value names. And then AMC, I'm really loving the chart where it's at up here. But one thing I'm watching is the covered calls. We still got all 300 of our shares. I've not sold any covered calls on them just yet. I'm waiting for kind of an explosion here so I could take advantage of some higher premiums. So we will see how that one plays out. But even then, AMC and GME, they had a little bit of a weird pop today. So just keep your eyes out for that as you see how the market is trading between all the indexes. The meme stocks have their own little role. So watch out for that. And then finally, bonds and the dollar, baby. TLT was very interesting. It, it moved up today even though the dollar really was up and it kind of showed a little bit more of a breakout point. But one thing people are discussing with TLT right here is related to the bond yield curves following October, middle of October, and where the debt ceiling day lands, because that could end up being a big event here. But it looks like you're getting a surprisingly large amount of bond demand yet. So it hasn't broken out. It hasn't done anything just yet. And that's why after tomorrow, if we get a lag or a leader, this may be able to tell us something. So maybe we get our confirmation tomorrow. If not, come into the end of October and even next week with Powell, we should get an answer. So I hope you're ready. But that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shine. I need you to remember, make it a good day. Reverse engineer it. But the code loves you. I love you. I'm going to see you in the morning. Let's go. Bro, I just got a hiccup during that. You hear? That's great. Let's go. I just hit the horn. <laughs>